we're going to move on and we're going to um, move from talking about motion to talking about what causes there to be a change in motion. So first let's just review what we know. There are three types of motion that we talk about. An object being at rest, an object traveling at a constant speed or velocity if they're traveling in the same direction, or an object changing its velocity, accelerating. So that could be slowing down, speeding up, or changing its direction, or all of those. If you're at rest, a ticker tape would just be a dot um, in one place. A position graph would just be a line at one position, and a velocity graph would be a line at zero. If you're traveling at constant speed, your dots on the ticker tape would be evenly spaced. Your position graph would be a, a line with a constant slope, and the slope would be your speed. And a velocity graph would be a flat line at that constant speed. And if you're accelerating, your dots would get further and further apart because you're getting faster in that direction. So to the left, you're accelerating, and to the right, you would be decelerating. So let's just consider the accelerating getting faster and faster. Your position graph would have a slope that's getting steeper and steeper, so you would be getting uh, you would have a parabola, and your velocity graph would be linear. So what we want to do now is we want to focus on the laws that govern motion, that talk about why motion is the way it is and how we can change our motion. So there's three types of motion that we talked about, and now we're going to talk about what causes those to change. So we're going to be talking about Newton's laws. And the first law I want to tell you is called Newton's first law. And you guys know it as the law of inertia. An object at rest tends to stay at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. But it's not just at rest, right? If an object is moving, so if that cat were in a car that was moving at 60 miles per hour, the car and the cat would both be moving at 60 miles per hour. So inertia is this tendency to stay doing what you're doing, and that's either to be at rest or at a constant speed. And you will you have a tendency, a natural tendency to do that. It's called the law of inertia. Inertia is our tendency to stay doing what we're doing, unless there's an outside push on it. So I'm driving down the road, cat's on my dashboard, sleeping, and I stop the car the cat's going to fall off. Not because there's a force pushing it, but because the car stops and the cat doesn't. It keeps going. Um, Newton was really not the first one to come up with this. As a matter of fact, uh, the reason why he gets credit for it is because he understood that it applied to and universally to the moon, and he was able to show that um, with math. But really, the person that came up with inertia was Galileo. And give you a uh, perspective, Galileo was born in 1642 and died in 1726, and that's the same year, excuse me, he was born in 1564 and he died in 1642, and the same year he died, Newton was born. So Newton it gets credit for this idea of inertia um, because he understood that it didn't just apply to objects falling to earth. Galileo, with all his experiments with balls and, and um, projectiles um, on Earth, but Newton was the one that actually realized that it happened everywhere. So what are some of the implications? Well, what it means is that if you are moving, there's no force needed to keep you moving at that speed. So imagine if I throw um, a ball and it leaves my hand. If there were no gravity, right? it would just keep moving in that direction forever and ever and ever. But there is a gravitational force pulling it down. So we are already learned that if I threw it this way and there was no gravity, it would move at a constant speed. But because there is gravity, it does start to fall and it picks up speed in the downward direction because it's accelerating in the down direction because the force that's causing it is in the down direction. Um, so, likewise, if an object is moving at a constant speed and there's no net force acting on it, it'll stay moving at a constant speed. So let's take an example of 
your car. So imagine that this block is your car, okay? And you are pushing on it with your brake, I mean with your accelerator, so the F app is the applied force. And then there's some friction, we're always working against you. And the earth is pulling down on you, that's the force from gravity, and the earth pushes back up on you, equal and opposite to that. So imagine that all of these forces were exactly equal. So let's say you pushed with 200 newtons forward and there was 200 newtons of friction. And let's say that this was a 2000 newton car. And because it's not falling through the earth or rising up, we know that the normal force or the force of the uh, earth supporting it would also be 2000 newtons. So this is said to be in equilibrium, even though the car is moving at a constant speed. Um, it's not getting faster because all of the forces in the X direction and in the Y direction are canceling each other out. There's a positive 2,000 newtons and it's being balanced by a negative 2,000 newtons. And there's a positive 200 newtons and it's being balanced by a negative 200 newtons. So what it means is that the, if the net force, if all the forces add up to zero, the object's going to keep moving at whatever speed it's at. And if it's not at a speed, if it's just resting, it would just stay put. So if this were, uh, if we just think about a box on a table, the only difference between a, the car sitting on the table or sitting on the ground and moving across the ground is that there's no left and right forces. It's just moving. This has got gravitational force and normal force balancing it, but they're equal and opposite to each other. So the net force is zero. The other thing that's, uh, that's implied here is that the more mass an object has, the harder it is to change its motion, right? So just think about if you had a little, if you had a big truck versus a little matchbox car and they were both coming at you, which one would, would you want to stop? Regardless of what their speed is, it would be easier to stop the littler one, right? because it has less mass. So mass is a measure of, of an object's inertia at rest. And when it's at rest, if it has more mass, it's gonna be harder to make it start moving. And it also turns out that if it has a lot of mass and it's moving, even if it's moving slowly, that mass contributes to how hard it is. Also, when it's moving, velocity has to be taken into account. So momentum is something that we'll talk about later. That's the moving inertia. It's the moving inertia of an object. So it's not just the mass, it's, times, it's also its velocity. Mass is just a measure of, of how much inertia you have. So in general, the bigger mass you have in kilograms, the more inertia tendency you have. So what happens when, when we... Um, have a net force greater than zero. Well, let's take an example of the object in free fall. So if the only force acting on that object in free fall is, is gravity, then the object is going to accelerate in the direction of the net force. But in real life, there is a drag force and air for, uh, resistance like our styrofoam ball in lab two. And Imagine this is that little styrofoam ball. When it starts to fall, it's very, very light. And as it falls and gets faster, air drag picks up on it. And eventually, as it picks up speed, it gets enough air drag that the air drag balances out the weight. And now we're at terminal velocity, a constant velocity. So terminal velocity is a constant velocity. So let's talk about that net force. The net force that causes something to accelerate can be calculated by taking the mass of the object times its acceleration. So if I want to know what the net force is that's causing it to change its velocity, causing it to change its motion, all I need to know are the kilograms of the mass and the meters per second squared of its acceleration. And if I multiply those together, I get a kilogram times a meter per second squared, which is also a newton. So let's just do a couple of examples. 
So first of all, force is equal to ma. So we have a 10 newton box pulling it to the east. So I'm going to write that in, 10 newtons. And we have a 5 newton box pulling it to the west, 5 newtons. So I'm going to assign a positive and negative friction. And I'm just going to use our convention that east is positive and west is negative. So the net force is equal to the sum of all of the forces, right? You remember forces are vectors, so we have to take into account their directions. So the net force is equal to 10 newtons plus negative 5 newtons, or 5 newtons. So what this tells me is that it's going to have a net force. If I were to draw that force, the net force acting on that box is in this direction and its value is 5 newtons and that's going to make the, the object accelerate. So our net force is 5 newtons, uh, I'm sorry I just wrote that wrong, huh? 5 newtons to the east. You can say east or you can say positive 5 newtons, either one. And in B, if we want to find the acceleration, we're just going to take our force and plug it in for force and our mass. So let's imagine that this box has a mass of one kilogram. Then the acceleration is going to be equal to the force divided by the mass. The force is five newtons and the mass is one kilogram. And to see our units work out, this is a kilogram times a meter per second squared, and I'm dividing it by a kilogram. So I'm left with five meters per second squared. So that means that if I were to draw a ticker tape, it would be increasing its speed by five meters per second every second. Let's take some, take some time um, to play a game. So let's look and see if we can um, identify when forces are balanced and when they're not. And if they're not balanced, whether or not they will be accelerated, the object will be accelerating what direction it will be accelerating in. So we're going to play a little game here. We'll do a couple of them. So right now, I have... Um, a diagram below represents forces on a leftward moving object. So the object is moving to the left. It's moving to the left. And the length of the arrow represents the strength of the force. So it only has two forces acting on it. It's moving to the left, but it has two forces. So it's probably sitting on a table. First thing you want to ask yourself is, are these forces balanced? Yes. They're balanced, right? They're equal in length. They're equal and opposite. And since they're balanced, then when forces are balanced, an object will always be traveling at a constant speed. What if we look at this scenario? Are the forces balanced? Well, no, they're not, right? Because the, the upper one is longer than the bottom one. It says that this object, uh, the force is acting on an upward moving object. So the, the object is moving up, okay? And the net force, the bigger force is up. Since it's moving up and the net force is up, then that means it's going to be, uh, it's kind of like a car with an accelerator, right? You're moving forward and your, your net force is forward. So this car is going to be, this uh, object is going to be speeding up in the up direction. So it's unbalanced, and it is going to be speeding up simply because it is moving in the direction of its motion. So now we have four forces. So let's look at this. The, the, um, in the y direction, the forces are balanced, but in the x direction, they are not. And in the x direction, the net force is in the positive right direction, but it tells me that it's moving leftward. So if I'm moving to the left and a force is pushing me to the right, what's going to happen? I'm going to slow down. So first of all, the forces are not balanced. They're unbalanced. 
And because I am moving in the opposite direction of the net force, I am going to be slowing down. I'm going to do one more of these, and then I'm going to encourage you to come and play this game to help reinforce what you're learning, because it really does a great job getting this idea of balanced and unbalanced, and then understanding that if an object is moving in the direction of the net force, it will be speeding up. If it's moving in the opposite direction of the net force, it's going to be slowing down. So this one's moving to the right. In the up and down direction is balanced, but there is nothing balancing out the leftward force. So the net force is unbalanced. It's unbalanced to the left, but it's trying to move right. So it will be slowing down. 